What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of The Well-Worn Path. Today we are playing another Edison format classic, which is, of course, uh, Synchro Cat. As you can see, we've got a pretty standard build here, basically completely unseasoned. <laughs> I think that Sidra with Gravekeeper Spy is probably the best way to go if you want to play full-on Synchro Cat with Triple Air Bellum. We, of course, also have um, Double Hamster, Double Raikou, which I concluded was the best ratio for my... Moja Cat build, and that's also why we have the uh, the bottomless deep prison. I think the back row, back row lineup is completely the same as in that build. Of course, you have Mind Control, Cold Wave for the big blowout spells. Mm -hmm. Triple Pot of Avarice, I'm very all or nothing on this card, and I think that uh, Synchro Cat's definitely a deck that needs it. We've got Sork Dad for the boss monsters, Gorse Trag for some extra defense. Um, so pretty, the whole thing's pretty standard, pretty self-explanatory based on sort of some very, very retro... Uh, kind of builds i honestly don't think the deck's that bad i think it's matchups in the current metagame are actually quite good it does pretty well versus blackwing versus frogs um and uh it's not bad for zombies either so deck might be a bit underrated even though it hasn't had too much uh competitive success lately um but yeah i i really like this version we're going to test it out and see how we can do today all right first replay up against sparky Sparky is playing... Was this the zombie player? Yeah, okay. I think this was a zombie player. So, opening up with Upstart Goblin. He's got a lot of interesting techs in here. He's got Gale the Worm, Card Trooper. I think he's on, like, Raikou and Avarice and stuff. Um, with the Divas, which is it's very neat, actually. Um, so, we're just going here. I was terrified this was going to get Kaiest, but fortunately, uh, we don't get punished for the crime of going second for once. So, I just make Arcanite. Uh, I decided to hold the Descendant in deck still so we can just book something down, which was definitely the right call. We pop both the set monsters. Unfortunately, one is Gobblezom, so he's going to get the search, but it's not the end of the world. I mean, we would have basically won the game if it, if it wasn't. So we're going to book down our Spy when he goes in with Card Trooper to get the Descendant. He doesn't have anything to set, even if he wanted to, and um, definitely don't want to with the Descendant on the board, so we just hit over. Uh, I consider booking, or, well, booking, Call the Haunting uh, back an air bellum here but aside it's a little too greedy uh, we don't play a second arcanite either so if he had gores it might actually be a big issue here we're gonna pop with the raiko and we just have lethal with call the haunted here since he's bricked on all monsters so that's gonna wrap up game number one game number two i made a killer misplay in this game and you're going to you're going to see why eventually um so here i decided to just set the solemn we can go for the monk play next turn opponent's kind of got a bricky hand see multiple pot of avarice they brought in Compulsory. I think they brought this in. I don't think they're maining it. Um, here, we could have maybe just kept the Minecon pitch the Book of Moon, which might have been right. Maybe? I don't, I don't know. I feel like I liked having the defense, though, just to stop the clap back. Uh, like, for example, if I hadn't sniped the Book of Moon here, or the, the brain control here, the Book of Moon would have been very nice to stop me from losing the game to that. Um, he's gonna drop Gores, we just pop it, we set, pass, he hits over. I let him hit over, because it's my fifth monster, and it's my light for Sork. Uh, I debate a lot here, and I decided it's best to Avarice first. Um, even though I, this, like, puts me completely behind on setting up either of the boss monsters in my hand. I felt like I just had to do it. Fortunately, he doesn't have, like, a Caius or anything, so we're gonna get the Descendant off. We go for popping the set. He actually puts back his own Debo, which is interesting. He's going to Avarice and I Judgment, but then he's got a second Avarice, so, you know, feels bad. I, I wouldn't normally Judgment here, but I felt like his hand was pretty weak since he hadn't been, like, punishing me at any point here. So he goes for Brio with no Pryo, so I decided to book it, just to be sure I get off this Raikou so I can hopefully set up my uh, my dad and my Sork. And it does set up my dad. And then it doesn't occur to me here that this token is 16, and I could actually just Brain go for Lethal. So I, I make a huge throw and miss Lethal I immediately realized, so I decided to not summon the Sork. Uh, just hold it in hand and hope I don't die. He's going to go for Caius, but I have the Gores to stay alive on the Caius burn, which is something you don't see too often. And then we have Sork and uh, Brain Cons, so it's just super over from this position. Yeah, I definitely should have won the turn before, though. That was just a complete oversight on my part, but it happens, you know. It is what it is. Next game, this one was against that new Chaos Plant deck that I've been meaning to try out, I think, because it's very cool. Uh, so, opponent opens the Power Tool uh, turn one combo. 
which is like all right we, we just have the side rid out it so very very convenient i could have sawn air bellum here i decide to play conservatively set the spy and then next turn i can like flip up the spy get the descendant some of the air bellum he goes to take this and i figure like it's fine so i'll, I'll solve if he kaises or something uh so he hits into my descendant and now we're in a good spot we rip a card he drops tragodia i forget what we rip we rip mark it's pretty good and then we pop the trag. He goes brain. I should have. I should have saw him to this. Didn't. I was like greedy. I thought like he would summon something to try and synchro, but then he just kaises me. So then I have to saw him the kais. It was, it was just really dumb on my part to not just saw him that straight away. He's got that set RFDD now, um, which could be pretty big. I end up actually forcing it out here because I decide to not play around mirror force, which could conceivably have been a bad call if it was mirror force because that would have made put me in a tough spot in terms of this Caius being bricked next turn after i avarice and drew two more avarice which is hilarious by the way but um he goes for the rfdd here to just to stay alive so it ultimately ended up being the right play forcing it out and then we've got the mirror here and we're just gonna Caius's last monster so definitely i think i played game one pretty well a few like there's one one or two maybe slight mistake or one like actual mistake and then maybe some debatable things uh he hits in with tomato here i decided to be greedy with my torrential because that's how i'm feeling and i'm rewarded with my greed by top decking um sangan to go with my torrential but he's got the judgment uh i decided to play greedy with my gores and that might have cost me this game actually i could have just dropped gores straight away and not taken so much damage and put myself in the danger zone against all these yoink spells um, he, he here should have attacked my gores to get a face up, by the way. But, um, I think, I think it didn't matter what I did here if he attacked my gores, but he just didn't. So I went for this play because I didn't realize that he had a plant engrave or something. I don't know. I, we were probably screwed this game, but I didn't need to die this next turn to the mark. So I think, uh, a little bit of a lapse in judgment there on my part. However, the opponent made a big screw up too. Just like it shouldn't have mattered. They should have just attacked my gores to get it face up. Here, not shotgunning the dust shoot definitely got me punished a bit. But then I get rewarded with uh, top deck Caius or something to convert this thing immediately. So I'm just like, yes, let's go. <laughs> Never punished. And we just pass to bluff gores. And the opponent falls for the bluff gores because. I mean, they would, like, be in serious trouble if, if I had the gores here. Then they miss on Dim Alk, which is unfortunate for them. So we get a, like, free plus there with the Sidra hitting over. We've got the Book of Moon to stop that, but he's got the Breaker to hit over it. And I decided to flip up my guy so I can set some back row. We, of course, have the Book... The Book of Moons are so crazy, man. This All these flip monsters, just resetting them, it's so value over and over again. I feel like I was never upset to see Book of Moon we go we get a rip we kill the guy in main two and then i think i sink for android the opponent has gale this might have been a super greedy psalm because he just has the deep prison too yeah i don't know about that one chief that, was, that might have been a might have been a throw he sets the tomato rather than summoning attacking which ended up being correct because i would have sork banished it speaking of which we got a sork banish this which definitely saves me some trouble and then the book of moon again no no i just have mst this time okay book of moon would have been great there though i'm just saying um he sets torrential and i actually kind of play into it setting this monk and get i do get sort of blown out by the offensive torrential tribute which i think one thing you should know about this is um, when you do this, you have to flip your Torrential before your opponent can flip their, like, bottomless Torrential. So you can't, like, wait for your opponent to use... Um, to use bottomless... Well, no, it's not super important here, but... The opponent goes for Kai's, and I have... Um, I have my own bottomless, so we're chilling. What, what I meant to say is you can't, like, wait for them to use it, and then then try to use yours like if they pass prio uh if they use their bottomless you can definitely like chain it there i think so that, that that would be fine but just a little bit of a piece of advice there so we're not a great spot actually we we need 
We need to find one of our pot of averages left in our deck, of which there are two, and we've been drawing for like several turns in a row now, just like going from like 16 to 12 cards in our deck. We're not finding it. Opponent goes for the DD Warrior Lady. Fortunately, we just have endless traps for the opponent's monsters. I decide not to mirror this. Uh, then we draw a hamster, and I'm like, all right, we're not making that mistake again. We're going to attack with the hamster rather than try to set it and get Kaiest, which turned out to be the right move. And then we finally, we finally draw the pot. Let's go. Uh, we draw Airbellum, which Gores would have been maybe an issue. It's not like a big issue. We could make like AFD, and then we have the Mirror Force too, so we'd be chilling. Opponent draws Mirror, but we have the Cold Wave, and we just kill them. Uh, and we drew the other Avarice for turn as well, so finally got found our way to our double Avarice there. That was a long, long, long game number three. I remember playing this as a complete slog. This deck's a lot of fun. I think both these decks are very fun. I gotta try this Chaos Plant deck out at some point, by the way. Looks interesting. Uh, the Synchro Cat deck, definitely, definitely a lot of fun. One of the first decks I played in Edison format, one of the decks that kind of got me hooked on the format. It just feels very very interactive, very back and forth, very skill based, and something I liked a lot. And I don't think the deck is too bad. It hasn't aged as badly as some other like old historic decks, even if it does maybe struggle with like, you know, getting monarched or something or going second. So there, there are issues like that, but deck's not too bad and it's a lot of fun. So hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the Well-Worn Path. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, become a channel member, share the video, all that stuff. And I will see you in the next episode.